Hey guys, so I wanted to do a little bit of an update video on this crevasse rescue system that I put out, uh, looks like about a year ago. And uh, ultimately in that year, while the system hasn't changed at all, so basically the name of the system is called the New Strand Direct Haul. Uh, let me give you some backstory here. Basically I put this video on the internet about a year ago today. And uh, in that time, it's gotten, uh, let me look at it, about 2,000 views from different people. And different people have asked me about it, uh, both from YouTube and in my life. I, I mostly threw it out there because I came up with this system on my own. And I, it was so obvious. I knew someone else has thought about it at some point, you know. It's just like too much of a, of a clear system to go to. And so I couldn't really find it through my sources, books, or online or anything. And so I put, I made a video about it and I put it out there. And um, ultimately, I mean, I got my answer. Um, different people have noticed it. Apparently, uh, it seems like different countries will teach this as their go-to method. So that's the nice part about it. And... Um, Ultimately, the actual name of the system is, I'm calling it the New Strand Direct Hall, and I think a, a number of schools call it that as well. So I wanted to release this updated video. I'm going to put the same video of me demonstrating a crevasse rescue system to a crevasse rescue class that I taught a while ago, and that way everyone can kind of see what I'm talking about in full. I'm also going to link the Alpine Savvy article. Uh, John Gadu, he contacted me asking about the video I made. He wanted to write an article about it, which he did. And so that is now on the uh, site right here. And obviously I got the link in the description if you want to read about it. It keeps the simplicity of the direct haul method, but it does a great job avoiding the pitfalls of the system. Uh, the biggest pitfall of a 3-to-1 direct haul is you can haul your climber into the lip of the crevasse, which <laughs> has killed people in the past. Either sometimes the belay loop will fail, other times the carabiner that they're into will fail, other times their back will just break from the amount of force that people put or keep adding to the system while this person's being pulled into the lip by padding the lip you can avoid that issue but when you're padding a lip and you're using your crampons or your axe or whatever to chop out the snow around that direct strand that the climber is sitting on you could sever the strand very easily so that's a huge thing to watch out for and probably someone's died because of that at some point i don't know any particular circumstances but it's probably happened other issues are it just uh, adds a lot of friction to have that rope dug in real deep. So if you have a large weight difference between your people on your rope team, you're probably going to want to put knots in between each climber on that team. And so if you have, you know, your heavy climber falls in, the knots help actually hold that fall. And so if you want to directly haul off of that line, then you're kind of hosed because you have all these knots in there. Or you have to do a really, you know, a knot pass, which if you have two micro tractions is a little bit easier to deal with. But overall, it does make the system a lot more complicated. And if you just take your end of the rope, drop it down to the climber and have them clip in or you have to rappel in and clip them in, then you just, you know, you avoid those two major pitfalls. You can have knots in the middle of the rope without changing any of your system. And then you can also pad the lip away from that weighted line. So those are the two real big benefits of this system. You do need a little bit more rope than the direct haul, which the direct haul uses the least amount of rope of any of these things. So no matter what system you do, you're going to need more rope. And, uh, you know, in the end, it's like you carry just a little extra rope. So if you do the drop loop, and a three to one on top, that uses the most amount of rope. You need like three times the amount of rope between you and your partner. Whereas this one, you only need like the amount of rope between you and your partner plus like 10 feet, you know, just enough to get that first haul going. And then you can add more rope or do a bigger haul or do whatever. Overall, I like this for teaching beginner intro to crevasse classes because 
if you keep the system nice and simple, it allows the people that are taking the class to just like learn one system. It's a good system. Um, and they can kind of like just get that under control before moving on to more complex things. And you just have the option of talking about adding knots in between both people. So uh, without changing anything. It used to be that if you wanted to teach a simple system like a three to one direct haul, you haul them up. And then now with all the information out there, uh, people ask you about knots in the middle of the rope and you would say, I ah, just save it. You know, that's a completely different class. It's a completely different system. But now you can just have, it turns like another two day class into basically a 20 to 30 minute talk about pros and cons of putting knots in the, in between both the climbers. And so it overall just helps them move on to higher level systems because they already have an understanding of dropping a new strand down to them. So that's my little spiel. I'm going to put the uh, video of me demonstrating this thing right afterwards. This is like the updated video. Um, so that way people can hear this system and understand the pros and cons with it and uh, hopefully get it out there a bit more. Also, like I said before, Alpine Savvy's article will be in the bottom uh, or in the description right there if you want to take a look at that. And then hopefully we can kind of get this spread out a bit more to people who want to use it. On a lighter note, uh, in my own circles, this has become known as the Tilly system, like Tilly crevasse rescue system. So if we want to keep on going with that name, I'm totally happy with that because it'd be pretty awesome to have a crevasse system named after me. But um, I understand other people have thought of it before. So uh, either way, yeah, if you want to start calling this the Tilly system, then I won't complain. So uh, <laughs> with that, uh, let's just move on to the video now. Ah. Good, James, are you okay? All right, so we were talking about this in the last group too. Sometimes it's more comfortable to have it on the side. Sometimes it's more comfortable to have the rope in between your legs. So you guys just have to find your position of comfort. Uh, in this case, I got a really good foot bucket. So I can be off to the side. And it's really just about getting your hands free, right? So now that I'm in this good enough stance, I can place my first picket, measure this out, make sure that this tiny little cord is actually gonna make it here. Nice. Oh, that's not quite how that work. So what I'll do is after I push that first piece, put this dude in to my knot. Here you go, grab my axe. Let's see if that holds. Yeah, okay, so that's holding pretty good, right? I need to do is uh, find my prusik. So the line that's not going to Jamie, right? Full clean prusik. further back rather than laterally. I want to go back this way, build a bit of a stronger anchor.
visualize these two pieces together. action <coughs> that's the end through my carabiner and then back through that slip knot yeah directional slip knot I'll tie it off with the motor hitch both my pieces, right? This tension equalization. I can pad my lip, grab the ice axe, felt pad it, do whatever I need. my rope. Another pressing hitch here, or I got the tip lock. system up, coil bitch onto my harness. Yeah, we go. Hauled out of the crevasse. Right 